Hey guys, let me tell you a story. Last year we did a poll on styles that you would like to see next. And today's all about the winner, which is the super category of transitional. Buckle up, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> So, transitional and traditional styles are back in a big way. So let's take a look at them. Transitional style is one of the super categories, and like traditional or contemporary. Now, when you boil it down, transitional is actually the blending of both contemporary and traditional together, but in a really successful, layered, textural and interesting way, not a big hodgepodge of a mess. Now, transitional is a little tricky. It's almost one of the most difficult ones to get right. So that's why I'm gonna show you a couple of baseline rules that you can use to create your space. Now, this category is super broad in terms of subcategories. It can look anything like California Cool, Beach Bungalow, Eastern Coastal, Farmhouse 2.0, Global, Rustic, French Contemporary, Gustavian, Scandi, all the way to kind of a New York City brownstone vibe. And it almost feels a little bit traditional 2.0 in its formality and scheming, so it can go a lot of different directions. Regardless of which end you're shooting for, it's with these four basic rules that you'll be able to get whatever style look you're looking for in the transitional. So, first one up is color schemes. Now, unlike traditional, which tends to be richer and more bold, transitional tends to have a softer, more neutral palette. You can see it here with these blonde woods and these more linen tones, softer blendings of colors or more of a black and white look. Important aspects about your color scheme are you want to remember to pull your color scheme all the way through the space to give the space a blended effect. So you may use a certain tone of blue, for instance, like in this room on the accessory pillows, and then pull it over and use it as well on an accent chair. So you're just making sure that you're creating a blended layered effect. Less patterns and more textures are better for a transitional story, and they tend to create more interesting contrasts together, which makes the story a backdrop for what's going to be happening in terms of the changes in line, which is the next rule. So rule number two is building your style language. Now, think of your design elements as falling into two categories. There's going to be your accent pieces, and then there's going to be your supporting pieces that work together. And the supporting pieces form kind of the backdrop that allow the accent pieces to really kind of shine and be important. So this is the third rule, which is watching your line and form. Now, you're going to be wanting to watch your forms when you're combining elements, right? So be mindful of shape and line. This is a perfect example. You've got this lovely little Louis the 16th chair in the background and how they've combined it, they've combined it with this really hot little little mid-century piece with the brass legs, also straight lines, as the Louis XVI is. So you're going to be keeping forms together. Or the opposite is also true. If you're working with curved accent pieces, you're going to want to combine them with softer lines, rounded arms on those larger upholstered pieces, or perhaps on accent pieces that give a continuity, but still allow for the contrast of the old with the new in a way that makes it feel like it belongs together. That's the key. So now the fourth rule is to remember to keep a single focal point. And this can get very difficult when you're working on transitional because you've got a lot of 
elements that are coming into play that want attention. So think of it this way. In each space, you're going to have one or one area that is the single focal point and let everything else support it. Often that element can be the accent piece that's maybe an heirloom, something you've inherited that you really love. If you saw my Q&A video, then you heard the question about a woman who had collected a lot of lovely Chinese antiques. This is a perfect example of having those elements be the main accent piece that you're going to use and the focal point and then build building around them a room that supports paying attention to those. So huh, now this isn't exactly Chinese antiques, but this is a perfect example. In this room, you've got that mirror, which is, oh my God, and the fireplace. And then as you see now, they've handled it, everything else around it, very quiet. The walls are a soft, plaster. Of course, they go for days, but they're still amazing. The upholstery pieces are calm and white and soft. Very simple. So that's a perfect example of there's one focal point. You can't miss it in that room. So this is another perfect example. The focal point is this gorgeous contemporary black and white art piece and all the rest of the items around it are kind of soft and all sort of monotone together. And so you can see that that's really the emphasis and it draws your eye up to that important piece. But the rest of the room still supports it and has interest in terms of textural blends as well as mixing old and new together. So that's a very successful solution as well. So now guys, if you're liking these tips, be sure and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so that you get notified every time I drop a new video or go live, which is going to be great this year. So now if you're getting that transitional is really kind of your thing, then where do you start? You start by building from those accent or specialty pieces and what if you don't have any? Well, the great thing about this is, is that if you haven't been lucky enough to inherit something, there's some great resources out there that you can touch base with now, like First Dibs or Cherish, Etsy, and there's a bunch of local consignment stores like Goodwill, flea markets, all of that. There's so many options to find maybe a little treasure that you can repurpose or that really becomes your statement piece that you will be working from. And then what you need to do to build the rest of the room, of course, Course, is you need to build those support pieces in, right? So you need to check out places like The Inside or Wayfair, One King's Lane, Pottery Barn, Anthropology has some fun blendable pieces, Serena and Lily, Rejuvenation, be sure and check those out. And in Canada, and internationally, you've got Wayfair again. In Europe, there's West Wing Now. You should check that out. Barker and Stonehouse, Australia. I'm gonna link all of these down below for you guys. So international is included as well so that everybody's covered on how to start building your transitional look. So now remember with transitional, it's a blending of the old and new in a layered and interesting way. You need to watch your color scheme. You need to build your style language correctly. You need to be mindful of your lines and your form and you need to centralize your focal point to one area in each space and then you're good to go with that. So guys, if you liked this video and you found it helpful, be sure and subscribe and hit that like button and watch these videos and I'll see you next week.